another abject failure. Oh, are you having a little tantrum on camera? <laughs> <laughs> you are, aren't you? No. Uh, it's just not the right tool. You're the right tool. <laughs> Coco van. The beans. Made with green beans. We're having the healthy option today of just a side of green vegetables. Helen opened the door and was greeted by a wild boar. <laughs> that was a surprise. Away. What do you mean it's outside the door? Wait. Welcome to the Littlest Chateau. Built in the 18th century, on the top of a valley, overlooking a small village in the southwest of France. This is Paul, and I'm Helen, and with our two children and three cats, we moved to France in the middle of the chaos of 2020 to follow our dream of living in a French chateau. Come join us at the start of our journey as we share the beauty of this forgotten building and follow our progress as we restore it back to what it once was. Okay, hello, welcome back to the vlog. And uh, today we're going to be installing uh, an air conditioning machine. And um, because we had some uh, family and friends over recently and it started to go warm, and the house gets very, very warm if it's been warm for a few days. I think in one of the bedrooms it was 27 and a half degrees at night, which was a bit hot. Um, and the reason it gets so warm is because of the walls. If you come with me, yeah, so the reason it's so hot um, <laughs> in summer is because of the walls that act like storage heaters. And if you take a look, they're, um, well, I don't know, that's probably a good foot and a half of solid stone and it just acts, it just gets hotter and hotter in the day and then uh, at night it just radiates the heat back out uh, into the house. So uh, we need to do something about it. So we bought an aircon unit and we're going to try and install it. Sounds simple. <laughs> Sounds simple, Sounds but, simple, it but isn't what could simple go wrong? Because of the windows, the windows make it complicated. So the reason it's so difficult to install this is because um, of the windows. We need to stick the uh, exhaust pipe for the aircon unit outside so that it takes the hot air and sticks it out, um, thereby making the inside cooler. But all the windows um, are like this with um, eight panes on each. And they, they open. Well, let's come and, come and have a look at how they open. They open outwards, don't they? No. Everything opens outwards. And no, fully... everything opens inwards. Do they open inwards? Yep. Oh, I'm going to stay here and you can show me how they open inwards. Oh, yeah. Well, so, there go. they all open inwards like this, um, which means that there's no real way to stick the pipe anywhere um, that would make any sense at all. Mm. Um, yep, I so, see what you're saying. So instead we have to find a particular window that it's going to work with. Um, so I think I found one, so let's go and have a look. Okay. Okay, so I think probably one of the only windows that we can use uh, in the chateau is that, those sort of square one, rectangular ones, um, that my lovely wife unit is pointing out now. And so what we're probably, what I plan to do is to take that window out, build a replacement window for it out of just a piece of wood. <laughs> really? Uh, and then put some hinges on it so it can hinge back into place, drill a hole for the, the pipe, and um, that window can then go back in place as a pretend window. Uh, hopefully with a lick of paint, it won't look any different from the outside. We don't want it looking ugly. It's a chateau after all, it's got to look chateau-y. So let's go and have a look. Oh, wow, <laughs> that's all news to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so welcome to the attic space. 
Uh, this is where that window we showed you from the outside is located. Uh, this is in the roof. It's been converted um, into uh, bedrooms by the previous owners. And the little window that we want to use is just here. Um, and it has been recently painted by the decorators. <laughs> so there may be a little bit of a problem <laughs> getting it open. It's stuck, completely stuck. So that's, I can see it wiggling. It does wiggle. It's wiggling temptingly, but <laughs> just want, not enough. Want I'm going to try and not fall down the stairs yeah, here. Good idea. So, um, what are you doing with that rope? Uh, I'm going to try and open the window using it. Um, okay. It's going to sort of wrap it around the pit parts that are exposed. Maybe I'll get a bit more purchase on it. Oh, I see. Uh, doesn't work very well. Yeah, hey, look at that. Well <laughs> Job done. done. <laughs> that comes off. Bats come in. Okay, so we've got it off. What we're going to need to buy uh, to make our pretend window are these little um, catches. I don't know what the proper name is for them. Hinges? Are they hinges? Yeah, they're, they're hinges, hinges, aren't they? Yeah, they're hinges, that's right. Well, uh, a new DIY thing. <laughs> okay, so I've got my piece of wood. Here it is in all its glory. It's a bit rotten at the bottom there. <laughs> um, but miraculously, it's exactly the right width. Blimey. Uh, and is it the right? sort of the right depth as well. Oh, Look, wow. it's almost perfect. That's a miracle. And um, the there's enough impressed. of it. Of course, there's a few nails over here in it. We'll have to pull them out and clean this up a bit. Mm. But uh, it's looking good. Let's Very get good. into it. Okay, so here we are in the workshop. Uh, I've fallen at the first hurdle, basically, how to cut the wood because it's big. Uh, I've got a little hacksaw here, but it's not going to do the job because <laughs> there's a problem there, <laughs> inherent there. Uh, What's the problem? I don't understand the problem. A bar is in the way, so I can saw so far and then I get stuck. There. What bar? Here. But that'll go through the wood. The bar will. Look, this is very thin and this is very thick. Just but like the camera woman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're really pleased with that, aren't you? Look at you. <laughs> well, blame the moron that designed that saw. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I have a bandsaw, but it doesn't take this um, width and capacity. So uh, oh, we have several chainsaws, but I think that might be a little bit inaccurate. Uh, so what's going to have to happen, sadly, is this which is just a wood saw and it's going to suck cutting through all of that. It's not going to be straight either. Why not? Because you're you. <laughs> that is the trouble. I am me. And uh, I don't do a lot of cutting through uh, wood. Safety first. Goggles on. I don't know why I'm putting goggles on for this. It's not a power tool. There we go. No, exactly. <laughs> You've got hands like, I don't know, Inspect a gadget or something. Are you expecting to saw gadget. that fast? And safety gloves. Wow. No, no, it's just for blisters. Right, here we go. Mm. What's the matter? <laughs> well, as you can see, it is not lining up with the marks that I've drawn in the wood very helpfully there there and there uh, i can't even see it. oh now i can I've see i've drawn pen marks can you see them <laughs> you're a bit off yeah it's just what happens when you're sawing by hand and you're not a carpenter <laughs> uh i don't really know what i'm going to do about that i might turn the whole thing over and pretend you can't see the marks <laughs> I can't have turned the whole thing over because it's too it won't even fit in the vice that way round. <laughs> why is there a, a why is there a face in my wood? 
<laughs> I was bored while I was waiting for you. Great, thanks. So I thought you needed that. That's perfect. Uh, that's just going to be a... <laughs> how how out is that it's miles like a country mile out that's really really very annoying well that's why i said measure top and bottom and then cut down the straight line that you draw in between the two points but um you know make the best of what you've done <laughs> set it on fire i think that would probably be the the, for the best. Oh dear. Get soaring. <laughs> Don't mutter. But why is it? It's not even straight looking there. Is this wonky on this end where I'm measuring from? <laughs> <laughs> I love how inadvertently we can just mess up cutting a piece of wood so badly. Even the simplest DIY tasks elude me, really, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> this is a joke. <laughs> so we have one cut piece of wood which is so wonky it's unbelievable. <sighs> what, what, oh dear. Yeah. Uh, I've got a planer but I don't really know how to use that so <laughs> what could go wrong? Uh, we've got a planer from the previous owners, that's why I don't know how, what I'm doing or how to use it. Um, so I think that's supposed to make things flat. Uh, <laughs> Stick it in the vise so and plane see. down the side. Let's see what happens. Not at all, in fact. Oh. Has it got nice. some on off switch? Don't plane your fingers. Or a safety lock or something. No. Maybe it was the other one that works. We've got another one? Yeah, there's loads of them. Various states of not working, I think. <laughs> That's why there's so many. Actually, if it's... I might get earbud defenders. That's just making a mess of the wood. It's like, <laughs> look at the state, look at this. <sighs> Amazing. Has it actually flattened it on the edge in any way? Where's no, your... no, it's still entirely unflat and it's also like taking the top off as well. Let me see. Coming in. Don't stop. Oh dear. <laughs> so it has. Another abject failure. Really? Yeah, that's not going to work at all. Oh, are you having a little tantrum on camera? <laughs> <laughs> you are, aren't you? No. <laughs> As you unplug that with real aggression. Stupid piece of... Uh, it's just not the right tool. I don't know what is the right tool. Sandpaper, maybe? You're the right tool. What are we making today? We are making cock ovan today. Um, we're going all French in our cooking. <laughs> Who'd have thought it? It is, or it contains, come and have a look. Bacon lardons. I think you can use chopped up streaky bacon as well, but I'm going for these because they're already done for me and simple. Some shallots, that's about four or five large shallots that I've just cut into these kind of bite-sized chunks. Um, 150 ml of chicken stock, just made from a stock cube. Diced up chicken breast, I know, controversy. This should be um, a mix of chicken breast and thigh and so on, but ugh, I don't like thigh meat. So chicken breast, some bay leaves and thyme, just for the seasoning side of things and the all-important Auvin, um, about 600, 650-ish mil, um, so pretty much almost a full bottle of red wine. So let's get going. So in my frying pan, I've just dribbled maybe a tablespoon or so of olive oil, a decent glug, I didn't measure it. 
I'm going to pop in my bacon bits, my lardons. There we go. And my shallots. And I'll just let all of those crisp through and brown up for about five or so minutes. So my bacon and shallots have cooked through for about five or so minutes. I'm just going to pop them in a dish to my side to just sit and keep warm for a moment. And into this frying pan, I'm going to put my chicken to brown. So I should have said, um, this chicken I've mixed with about a tablespoon and a half of plain flour and seasoned with salt and pepper. And as that cooks, when the wine is added, it'll just help everything thicken up. And I'm going to add a bit more oil to them because my bacon soaked up quite a lot of my oil. So there we go. And again, I'll let this brown for about five or ten minutes. So, um, my chicken's been going for about ten or so minutes. It's getting a sort of nice golden colour to it. It's lost all of its pinkness. I'm going to put in about a capful, secret ingredient that I forgot to mention, of cognac. Yes, in fact, capsule in a bit. Just to lift off any sticky bits at the bottom of the pan to get all that flavour up. There we go. I'm going to quickly transfer everything into a larger saucepan for the main cooking period. So in goes all my chicken. And now back into this, I'm going to pop my bacon and shallot. There we go. Hundred and fifty ml of stock. Just give that a little zhuzh around. Get those stock cube bits up with the red wine. There we go. And all my red wine and last but not least a decent handful of thyme and <laughs> I'm getting a message some bay leaves about three bay leaves where are the bay leaves they're here oh you put them in together yeah these are bay leaves bay leaves bay oh, leaves yes. thyme's already buried itself down at the bottom there it is so I've got this up to a boil now come and have a look and I know it seems silly to show you what boiling liquid looks like, but just in case, just for completeness, I'm going to drop it right down to a simmer. Give it a little stir, just to make sure nothing's sticking at the bottom. Shouldn't be, but you never know. Lid on, it's going to sit and simmer for about an hour, and I'll check on it a couple of times during that hour, just to give it a little stir. Okay, we've been going for about, I'm going to say about 45 minutes, slightly less time than I was going to go for, but I am calling this ready. Um, you can see that that red wine colour has really darkened and thickened up, thanks to the flour that the chicken was dusted with. And having had a little taste, I can tell you this tastes really, really good. So let's get it onto a plate. Here we go. Whoops. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. Get an untidy plate with some dribbles of sauce on it. There we are. So there you have it. Cocovin. With beans. Made with green beans. We're having the healthy option today of just a side of green vegetables. But this works really well with creamy mashed potatoes. Um, little sauté potatoes, loads of different vegetable sides, crusty bread, however much or however little you want. It's another super simple, really easy to put together and just leave alone on the hob recipe while you get on with other bits and pieces. It's so tasty because of the richness of the wine and the bacon and the shallots and everything. So for very little effort, you've got something really delicious to enjoy. Um, so. Let's get stuck in. Bon appétit. It's day two. Day two? Of what? Of whatever we're up to this week. 
Day two of failure. <laughs> no, this is a separate video. Look. We, um, we're just waiting to hear back for a quote um, to get the beams in the attic standed. And Helen's gone. Where, where have you gone? Oh, you've gone to get a kitty. Yeah. Yes, old. He meowed and wanted a... Um, FYI, we're living in a post sanglier or wild boar universe in which um, Helen opened the door uh, last night to put out the um, bins and was greeted by a wild boar <laughs> That was a surprise. Away. So yeah, we hide our bins behind this magnolia bush for like food scraps and things. And it was just basically there. <laughs> and I stepped out of the kitchen doorway and it kind of went <laughs> and I went, oh my God. What did it do? <laughs> and what did you do? <laughs> I ran back in the house at high speed and then Paul went, get the camera, get the camera. <laughs> while I was barricading the door shut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not opening that bloody door again. It's massive. What do you mean it's outside the door? Have a look. Wait. It was um, just having a snuffle along um, over here on the right. Oh, outside the front of our house. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I haven't seen this supposed creature um, you have? No, I hadn't up until earlier this morning. Okay. So I was sort of mocking Helen and saying that she'd seen a very hairy cylindrical dog and then claimed it was a wild boar. But I saw it this morning and it is real and it's enormous. Yep, yep. So here is the, um, the shoe air area. Stayed there. <laughs> stayed there for an entire year. Yep. And we've got to try and get it up the stairs. Oh, um, darling, it's not that heavy. Then up some more stairs. What's this? The handles. Oh, that's handy. Yeah. Handily. Oh, come on. oh, that's not very handily. Jesus ah. ah, my foot is stuck. <laughs> Where do you run? My foot is completely stuck under the box. Paul. <laughs> it's, it's already gone very badly wrong. You're such a woman. Oh. Okay. Honestly. <laughs> Lift it. I'm trying. Right. Do you know what? I'm going to do it this way. Because it's easier. You hold it by your little pathetic handle. I'll do the man's work. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to push me down the stairs. More than once I've thought about pushing you down the stairs. All right, stay that there. <laughs> You all right? Yeah. You look very funny. <laughs> Wait, stop down. Here. Yeah, it's easier to do that on the stairs, but not easy to do it. No, this bit's going to be fun. This is fine. <sighs> Darling. It's heavy. They're not Atlas stones. Um, it needs to go here, ultimately. Well, oh, yes, I see what you're saying. So, I don't have it because I haven't got a grasp on it. Uh, I have it. Can we, <laughs> can we prop it? Yeah. Slightly. There we go. Now what? You let go. Let go? Yes. It'll fall on the floor. No, it won't. Okay. Now get hold of it underneath. We might have to just stick it on its side. Not prepared to go on its side. Oh, really? Mm hmm Well, wait, shouldn't you go there and receive it? No, let's get it up there. Oh, all right then. Well, it's going to have to go on its side then, Paul, no, if you're not there just, to receive just push it. push it a bit more. So we can sort of rotate it like this. But don't let it sort of go down the stairs. There we go. There. there we are. Hurrah! Okay. Good. Good. We didn't. Oops. Hurrah! Hurrah! <laughs> there. <laughs> Helen Holt. <laughs> yeah. I didn't mean to do sound effects. <laughs> it just kind of happened. Now 
now then. Now then, now then. Oh Probably dear, no. Don't, 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 don't invoke him. Don't invoke Jimmy Savile. No. <laughs> so, let's get rid of these. It's wheels. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, stuck around me. So, um, it can wheel itself off the cliff and <laughs> down. <laughs> Destruction. Extend the hose to the desired length and position and to the <laughs> What? How do you spell that? Extend hose to the desired length and position. No! <laughs> I can't speak! That's the exhaust nozzle! <laughs> Extend the hose to the desired length and position the exhaust nozzle outside a window. Ah! <laughs> okay! <laughs> Does it reach? <laughs> what was this bit for? What the bit? What's this toilet bit for? That's the um, exhaust nozzle that pokes out the window. To it's not suk, square. Suck the hot air out, look. There's a picture of it. No. It needs to be not, no, no. It has to be round, because I bought a round thing. <laughs> a round saw to cut through the I hole in the, <laughs> in, the, in the thingy. That needs to be this big, I think. Although I don't know how big the saw is. <laughs> I don't remember it being that big, I have to say. Mm. Um, okay, I suggest that we decant to the sawing department. Down in the basement. <laughs> yeah. And we also take this window with us. Oh, okay. Right, I've stopped making stupid noise with that. Yeah. We're going to take this window with us. <laughs> it's like an accordion, isn't it? Maybe not. I don't know how you play accordions. You do that. <laughs> go on then. I can't. You need to. I can go this way. Which way? Where you are now. I need to go. But you're just going to launch over the stairs with a piece of glass. I'm not going to launch. I'm going to step gingerly. Well, that's what I was not going to do. Oh no, it's extremely easy. Yes, it's <laughs> I'm just being pathetic. Yeah, <laughs>